everyone. This is Michael Gilbert, and I'm a therapist of 40 years. Of I'm not 40 years old. I've been a therapist for 40 years. And now I'm moving into direction of sharing ancestral storytelling councils, creating and facilitating circles where we share our ancestor stories together. It's very powerful when we share these stories into a witness field and attunement with each other, one another, and empathy and compassion. And accessing these stories uh, is very uh, uh, doable, is what I want to say. Sometimes we have not many uh, explicit stories we've been told. Uh, of course, uh, displacements and family breakages, uh, adoptions, etc., that have limited access to some to these explicit stories. But we can access these stories somatically and implicitly, and via accessing grandparents, stories, legends of grand great grandparents, uh, the lands that we came from, the lineages that transmit through the years, through the generations, the transgenerational migrations, both backwards and forwards. I had a dream once uh, that I pet petted a goat, and this goat, when I petted him, her, um, they, uh, healed both backwards and forwards. And I believe that, that as we remember our ancestors and honor them and love them and thank them, that they revive if they're, if they're not already uh, enlightened beings, let me say. And um, the portal opening is a, is a, I'll have some videos on that sometime, how to access those portals. And sharing those stories with each other is really magical. The synchrony in the sharing, what's evoked in each other as we drop our own pebbles or rocks or boulders into the, the lake with one another uh, are profound. We expand ourselves, we can liberate ourselves and help liberate our ancestors and access through accessing in trauma and stories and memories uh, we can heal backwards and forwards and access the richness and the wisdom and the blessings in our in our lineage and sharing each from our own lineage is like bringing the feast to the table so with that intro i'd like to share with you a story about one of my ancestors whom I never met in person, but I speak with. I call the story Papa Yosef and the Shield. I was in the Amazon River Basin some years ago, drinking ayahuasca with shaman and a group of, of us, Amanda, brought deep into the Amazon Basin, about five, six hours in. And the third journey I had, each journey I had, I actually, after a very powerful psychedelic purgative effects, ayahuasca is a very powerful plant, I landed in my elementary school playgrounds each time, three times. Playful, I could see everyone and everywhere and everything all at once uh, simultaneously. It was really very brilliant and safe and fun and playful. And then I went somewhere else. In the third ceremony, I found myself floating in a canoe into the spirit world. And as I floated in on a canoe, like so I felt safe on the boat and floated in and I could hear my, my grandparents' voices. And I'd always said for so many years, ah, oh, I lamented, how can you know someone if you haven't heard their voices? And to hear their voices was one of the greatest blessings of my life. And I felt them sharing, be peaceful. Don't torture yourself over us. I had three grandparents that were murdered, four grandparents in a uh, great-grandmother in the Shoah. And to hear their voices and hear their comfort. I, my grandma Liba, I mean, just heart. She just felt her love. My grandfather Mordechai, my father's father, he was... He was like, don't worry, we're in the trees and uh, we're free and don't torture yourself over us. And my grandfather Yosef, he laid a shield, a mantle over my chest. He was a shoemaker and worked with leather and was cobbling together a life with my grandma Stella. 
And I feel him here in my hands. I feel my grandma Liba in my heart. My son Gavi, uh, he uh, is named Gabriel Yosef after my grandfather Yosef and my bonus grandfather Joe, Grandpa Joe, that I grew up with, my grandma Stella and my mother's parents, stepfather. And uh, he would <laughs> require me to tie his shoes. He was already still like five, six, seven years old. Like, so tying his shoes, I kind of commemorate now. I, remember, I, I think of my grandfather, Yosef, in the shoe department. <laughs> ah. I talk with him, uh, my grandfather, Yosef, and what I feel is unconditional approval. I feel gratitude from him. I feel clear, healthy, spiritual guidance and acceptance and approval. And you know, feeling approval from our fathers or our grandfathers is a really fundamental aspect of self-assurance and confidence. And so, yeah, my mother, when the Anschluss happened, the invasion, the the bombing of Poland and the taking over of Poland uh, remembers her father. She was four at the time, carrying her on his shoulders while the planes flew overhead. She thought they were big birds. And they went and were taken to a ghetto named Zheshev. Zheshev is now in on the border of Poland and the Ukraine. And uh, there's a NATO base there now. And I hear from a friend who visited there that they don't smile in Zheshev. Well, they weren't smiling back then. We were ghettoized, our, my mother's family uh, and her mom and dad and grandparents and aunts and cousins. And the ghetto was going to be liquidated. My grandmother knew this and sent my mother under a fence to a Polish woman who took the money and ran as my mother cried and pushed her back under the the fence into the ghetto. My grandmother, uh, my grandfather uh, uh, lifted her and Rosa and embraced her in his arms. And that's the last memory she has of him. Grandma Stella and grandfather Joseph, Joseph must have made a choice there that to have grandma and mom escape from the ghetto and leave him and the rest of their family behind. And he uh, most likely was either taken to a concentration camp or shot in the fields. So thank you, Grandfather Yosef, for your sacrifice. When I dance, I dance with your hands in mine. And thank you for letting me know you know. My mom had a, a very deep care wound being as young as she was. And to feel the caring uh, backwards and forwards in time is very helpful you know, in healing. So as I share that story with you, what touches in you? Who of your grandparents, great-grandparents, what legends, what stories, who do you feel approval from? Who do you feel love with? Resources like that are very powerful in our, in resili our resilience in uh, healing from trauma. And uh, so... Also remembering the lands and the places and the occupations can be helpful to track our lineage, the context, our backgrounds behind us that infuse and imbue us with love and remembrance and honoring and celebration. So thank you, Grandfather Yosef. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, please, uh, in the comment section, share what you'd like, what evokes for you. Thank you. Be well. <laughs>